Hello, everyone. It's Alina. Welcome to my Soap General Hospital official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. In the quarter main kitchen, Drew enters and Sasha gets him some espresso. She can't quit pondering the kiss she saw among him and Willow the previous evening. Drew cautions her that he might require a couple of more as he's hauling today. Sasha remarks it was an important day, and his discourse was moving. Willow enters, and Sasha gets her some espresso also. Sasha likewise made a lot of bagnets, which Wiley says are his new number one. Sasha chooses to proceed to beware of Cody and discuss house stuff. She advises them to partake in their morning. Let be. Will is happy she ran into Drew. She should be certain that she adores Michael and that it was off base for them to kiss. She says it's not what her identity is. Drew calls it a mishap, and he could never hurt Michael anything else than she would. According to Willow, past the point of no return, we previously did. Drew says it was indiscreet, and one kiss doesn't need to transform anything. Drew says they ought to put it behind them and continue on, and consistently, week and month that goes by, the memory will blur. Out of nowhere, Michael enters having smelled the bagnets. Michael begins talking work with Drew, so Willow pardons herself. Attracted offers to investigate the financial plan Michael's drawn up. After they go over the financial plan, Michael inquires as to whether Willow appears to be not exactly right to him. Drew is concerned and inquires as to whether he implies Willow is wiped out once more as she appeared all good to him. Michael says she's not debilitated and perhaps he's being overtouchy. He stresses each time she becomes ill that the disease has returned. Drew calls that a reasonable response and to offer himself a reprieve. Michael will attempt, yet the previous evening, she experienced such a lot of difficulty resting. Nonetheless, in the event that Drew believes she's fine, he'll quit stressing. Michael takes off. Sasha shows up at the pens and shouts to Cody. He seems shirtless. Sasha has something to educate him regarding the previous evening. Cody stops her and exclaims that the previous evening he let Mason Tosh know that he was his child. It just emerged. She asks how it went. Cody says he ought to have kept his mouth shut and Mason Tosh is irate. Cody makes sense of he told Mason Tosh everything and Mason Tosh feels deceived. Sasha says he really wants to give Mason Tosh time and she's pleased with him. She figures he should feel quite a bit improved with this load off his mind. He feels like trash and he needs to get the damnation away. He leaves and she follows and inquires as to whether she's truly leaving. He needs to, yet Maxie undermined him not to leave. Be that as it may, it's not a direct result of Maxie. He's remaining, however, her. Sasha lets him know that he needs to quit tracking down motivations to dart as they are building something together. Sasha kisses him and cautions him, assuming he goes, she will conceal Tracy's mystery cash box and tell her that he took it. She notes Tracy will have each cop in the state searching for him. She makes Cody vow to converse with her before he chooses to go. He concurs, so she chooses to get back up to the house as he has no clue about what could occur there. Afterward, Willow shows up to mind the ponies after the firecrackers. Cody gets into a shirt and tells her he ensured they'd be okay, and they are really metalheads. Willow says now, and then firecrackers can so divert. He gets her some espresso and inquires as to whether he missed a great time the previous evening. Willow says the state of mind was great and individuals are perky about Drew's run for Congress. Cody inquires as to whether she'll lobby for Drew. She doesn't believe she's a clever campaigner, yet he simply thinks getting the family included will help Drew and she's one of the seriously engaging relatives. He says Mother Q, Creek Lynn, and pursue additionally would be great for Drew's image. He's happy Drew is running, and everybody needs to be essential for a family, in any event, when you believe you don't merit it. Willow knows how that feels, as Michael and Quartermains have given her beginning and end. At Maxie's, 
She and Felicia discuss Cody and Mason Tosh. They can't help thinking about what occurred with Felicia's DNA test. Felicia says the lab she utilizes is awesome. She's pre-owned it often previously. Felicia realizes Maxi has been able to know Cody as a companion. Maxi says they all have, and he's been superb. Felicia doesn't maintain that she should lash out when she says this. Yet for what reason would it be advisable for them to trust Cody now? Maxie says she trusts Cody and he's persuaded Mason Tosh is his dad. Felicia inquires as to whether Cody could be working a point. Maxie says dislike they have cash. And when she conversed with Cody, she could see he was prepared to dart from his slip-ups. She grasps the inclination and she needed to compromise Cody into remaining. They head to Maxie's lounge room and Felicia is as yet experiencing difficulty accepting Cody is Mason Tasha's child, given her DNA test results. Unexpectedly, Sasha appears and apologizes for dropping in this way. Sasha says this is significant, and she realizes Cody is Mason Tasha's child. She's known for a really long time. Truth be told, they plunk down, and Felicia reminds Sasha that she did a DNA test despite Cody's good faith. Sasha admits she saw Felicia take hair from Cody's brush at the home and heart set, so she changed it out with her own example. She'd abhorred deceiving them, yet she was expecting to give Cody time to come clean all alone. Maxie doesn't see the reason why Cody was hesitant to come clean as Mason Tosh is an incredible person. Sasha says Cody knows that, and he has this thing about not being sufficient, Maxie and Felicia acknowledge her expression of remorse. Sasha asks what comes next as Cody says Mason Tosh is harmed and furious. Felicia says he is, and Sasha feels she compounded the situation in attempting to help. Maxie tells her not to give herself trouble. This all falls on Cody. Sasha says he's crushed and talking regarding leaving poor Charles. Maxie compromised him into remaining, and Sasha said as she did as well. Felicia says Mason Tosh is crushed, and neither one of the wills approach the other as they share a similar difficult quality. Maxie gets some information about this. Scott shows up at Ava's room at the Metro Court, and she investigates the lobby and ensures Kate's isn't following or spying. Scott says he's known John since secondary school, and he's a hero. Scott has brought Diane's countersuit, and Saudi needs sole guardianship of a hurry. Ava isn't shocked, and Scott says current realities of this case irritate him, incorporating her living with Sonny for some time, and Avery having been ping ponged to and fro, which judges could do without to see. Ava states that is the reason she needs Avery with her. Scott brings up this is an in room where at Sonny's, she has an everyday practice and a steady home. Ava reviews him saying, assuming Sonny had a public implosion, Scott questions that will occur during the care fight as he isn't simply idiotic. Afterward, Ava heads to the emergency clinic to see Sonny's drug specialist. He says she can't be here and she needs to leave as he has a workforce conference. She takes steps to uncover him for altering Sonny's drugs. The drug specialist knows she's not Sonny's significant other. Ava counters that she realizes he is filling his drugs with a fourth of the portion. He swears he'll fill the full solution proceeding, yet she believes that him should give him a 100% fake treatment. She says in the event that he doesn't, she'll let Sonny know what he's doing. The drug specialist says this is hazardous and unsafe. Alva says it's a gamble she will take, and Sonny will get full fake treatments until she advises him to stop them. He consents to deal with this for her. She says thanks to him and inquires as to whether anybody has come to get some information about her. He says no, so she says on the off chance that somebody does, make up a story that she came for an interview. She trusts he does nothing that will cause her to need to return. Sonny drops off Avery with Carly and says thanks to her for permitting her to come here and invest energy with Donna. Sonny remarks on how quick they are growing up. Sonny trusts with Ava gone that Carly might rethink Donna going through evenings with him. Unexpectedly, the room develops cold when Jason shows up. 
Jason makes proper acquaintance, and Sonny says he has individual things to examine with Carly. Carly tells Jason they are discussing the children, and she shares with Sonny she adores Avery and she is wanted here anytime. Sonny says there is something else. He uncovers Ava has served him with guardianship papers over Avery, and Carly might be called to affirm, given they share authority of Donna. He needs to understand everything that she'd say to the adjudicator to the extent that his reasonableness as a parent. He realizes they've had issues, however, trusts she will not go into court and say he's a horrible dad. Carly concedes they've had issues, yet in the event that she will waste anybody in court, it will be Ava. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please click like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.